the world to stage and all the men and women melee players they have their exits and their entrances and one man in his time plays many parts his acts being seven ages Shakespeare. I was born on April 23rd, 1564, in Stratford-upon-Avon, England. From roughly 1594 onward, I was an important member of the Lord Chamberlain's Men, Company of Theatrical Players. Over a course of 20 years, I wrote plays that captured the complete range of human emotion and conflict. Located 103 miles west of London, was a market town bisected with the country road and the River Avon. I was the third child of John Shakespeare, a leather merchant, and Mary Arden, a local Highlanded Harris. I had two older sisters, Joanne and Judith, and three younger brothers, Gilbert, Richard, and Edmund. Before my birthday, my father became a successful merchant and held official positions as elder men and bailiff an office resembling a mayor. However, records indicate my father's fortunes declined sometime in the late 1570s. Now later in my life, I was married to Anne Hathaway on November 28, 1582 in Worcester in Canterbury Province. Hathaway was from Shortery, a small village a mile west of Stratford, now, when I married, I was 18 and Anne was 26, and as it turns out, pregnant. Our first child, a daughter we named Susanna, was born on May 26, 1583. Two years later, on February 2, 1585, twins Hamnet and Judith were born. Sadly, Hamnet later died at the age of 11 most likely of the Black Plague. By 1592, I had earned a living as an actor and a playwright in London and had several plays produced. The September 20th, 1592 edition of the Stationers' Register included an article by London playwright Robert Green that took a few jabs at me. Here it stated, There is an upstart crow, beautified with our feathers, that with his tiger's heart wrapped in a player's hide, supposes he is well able to bombast out a blank verse as the best of you and being an absolute Joanne's factorum, is his own conceit the only shake seen in a country, Green wrote of me. Many differ on the interpretation of this criticism, but most agree that it was Green's way of saying I was reaching above my rank, trying to match better known and educated playwrights like Christopher Marlowe, Thomas Nash, or Green himself. By the early 1590s, I was a managing partner in the Lord Chamberlain's Men, an acting company in London. After the crowning of King James I in 1603, the company changed its name to King's Men. From all accounts, the King's Men company was very popular, and I had works published and sold as popular literature. And the theatre culture, however, in the 16th century England was not highly admired by people of high rank. Many of the nobility were good patrons of the performing arts and friends of the actors, however. I was able to attract the attention of Henry Withersley, the Earl of Southampton, to whom I dedicated my first and second published poems, Venus and Adonis of 1593 and The Rape of Lucrece, 1594. By 1597, 15 of the 37 plays I had written were published. 
At this time, I purchased the second largest house in Stratford, called New House, for my family. It was a four-day ride by horse from Stratford to London. So I spent most of my time in the city writing and acting and came home only once a year during the 40-day Lenten period when the theatres were closed. By 1599, my business partners and I built our own theatre on the south bank of the Thames River, which we called the Globe. In 1605, I purchased leases of real estate near Stratford for £440, which doubled in value and earned me £60 a year. This made me an entrepreneur as well as an artist. These investments gave me time to write my plays uninterrupted. My first plays were written in the conventional style of the day, with elaborate metaphors and rhetorical phrases that didn't always align naturally with the story's plot or characters. However, I was very innovative, adapting the traditional style to my own purposes and creating a freer flow of words. With only small degrees of variation, I primarily used a metrical pattern consisting of lines of unrhymed iambic pentameter or blank verse to compose my plays. At the same time, there are passages in all my plays that deviate from this and use forms of poetry or simple prose. With the exception of Romeo and Juliet, my first plays were mostly histories written in the early 1590s. Richard II, Henry VI, parts 1, 2, and 3, and Henry V dramatize the destructive results of weak or corrupt rulers and have been interpreted by drama historians as my way of justifying the origins of the Tudor dynasty. I also wrote several comedies during my early time. The witty romance of Midsummer's Night's Dream, The Romantic Merchant of Venice, The Wit and Wordplay of Much Ado About Nothing, The Charming As You Like It and Twelfth Night. Other plays before 1600 include Titus Andronicus, The Comedy of Errors, The Taming of the Shrew, and The Two Gentlemen of Verona. It was in my later time, after 1600, that I wrote the tragedies Hamlet, King Lear, Othello, and Macbeth. In these, my characters present vivid impressions of human temperament that are timeless and universal. Possibly the best known of these plays is Hamlet, which explores betrayal, retribution, incest, and moral failure. These moral failures often drive the twists and turns of my plots, destroying the hero and those he loves. In my final time, I wrote several tragic comedies. Among these are Cybeline, The Winter's Tale, and The Tempest. Though graver in tone than the comedies, they are not the dark tragedies of King Lear or Macbeth because they end with the reconciliation and forgiveness. I lived during the early modern period a time in Western history that is between the Middle Ages and the Industrial Revolution and has created modern society. This time is, among other events, characterized by religious changes. The Church of England broke from Rome during the reign of Henry VIII. He established himself as the supreme head of the Church in England. A new English identity was not just promoted by religious independence, but also by the reigning Tudory dynasty. After the victory over the Spanish Armada in 1588, my history plays were deeply influenced by the new sense of English national identity. The early modern period also saw the rise of capitalist economies. Henry VIII founded the modern English Navy and during the reign of Elizabeth I Atlantic explorations and maritime trade paved England's way towards becoming an imperial power. At the beginning of the 16th century, England has been rather unimportant in Europe but by the turn of the century, the country had gained a lot of influence by the European power gain. London was rapidly rising in importance. Its many small industries were growing, and the city itself became the first European metropolis. Around 1500, the city had approximately 70,000 inhabitants, and in 1600, one could already count 200,000. It was in this time the first maps of London were redrawn. 
city was characterized by public entertainment such as theaters, but the playhouses were built outside of the city boundaries since authorities feared the crowds raised by public entertainment. The first theatrical district was located north of the city wall and shortage it beyond the city's jurisdiction. I began my career during the reign of Elizabeth I. She was a child of Henry VIII and his second wife, Anne Boleyn. During her reign, England flourished. This is the reason why her reign is also referred to not only as, a, as the Elizabethan era, but also as the Golden Age of Elizabeth. The Virgin Queen was one of the most popular monarchs in English history and loved the theater. I was often referred to as an Elizabethan playwright and poet, but one needs to remember that I still produce plays and poetry during the reign of James I, who was the first monarch of England from the House of Stuart. In my lifetime, I have made several contributions to English literature as well as to the world. I have contributed to modern culture and people of our time in many different ways. I have helped you all understand the meaning of literature. My works are the foundation of many of the archetypes that are founded in modern day literature. My plays have influenced the way many writers write their plays and how we learn to understand Old English. I have also expanded our vocabulary by adding many words to the English language. I have been placed among one of the writers who has dignified the language. I helped up in making English a practical means of reaching the public. I gave you the Globe Theatre, one of the major theatres of this time. Many of my plays were done there, and still are. I am widely known as the greatest writer of the English language. I am also the most quoted writer in the history of the English-speaking world, after various writers in the Bible. I have also had a lot of influence on a large number of writers of each century. Romeo and Juliet. I mix tragedy and comedy together to create a romantic tragedy genre. Through my soliloquies, I show how plays would explore characters' inner motivations in conflict. What seems to be true is that I was a respected man of the dramatic arts who wrote plays and acted in some of the late 16th and early 17th centuries, but my reputation as a dramatic genius wasn't recognized until the 19th century beginning with the Romantic period of the early 1800s and continuing through the Victorian period. Claim and reverence for me and my work reached its height. In the 20th century, new movements and scholarship performance have rediscovered and adopted my works. Today, my plays are highly popular and constantly studied and reinterpreted in performances with diverse cultural and political contexts. The genius of my characters and plots are that they present real human beings in a wide range of emotions and conflicts that transcend their origins in Elizabethan England.